On the uh, monitor, you see displayed, in fact, the mass spectrum from one of these uh, samples. This is uh, a relatively high level of, uh, of helium-4. Uh, we compare the samples each day that we perform the analysis. We compare the sample of gas from the various uh, active cells and blanks with uh, a sample uh, of room air, uh, which we have measured uh, many, many times and know to be uh, 5.22 parts per million. If the helium is produced by a nuclear process, then necessarily there will be uh, an associated release of uh, heat. It appears that, uh, yes indeed, uh, in the vessel that was producing uh, helium, there was some evidence of excess uh, heat, and that the amount of heat produced was approximately uh, quantitatively correlated, that is, the right amount of heat was produced uh, compared to that of a nuclear process involving uh, deuteron plus uh, deuteron producing uh, one helium for a nucleus, which releases 23.8 uh, million electron volts. An experimentalist who has pioneered another promising cold fusion method, sonocavitation, is Dr. Roger Stringham of First Gate Energies. Using ultrasound frequency, Stringham has observed extraordinarily high temperatures caused by the process of cavitation where microscopic bubbles in water tunnel their way into target metals. Metals like silver, titanium, palladium, and platinum are melted by intense heat created during the brief moment it takes for a bubble to collapse. Well, this is a cavitation process going on in the bubble. And the acoustic energy is absorbed uh, by the liquid, and there is a certain point in which it creates small voids which actually grow and then collapse very rapidly. And that is the cavitation idea. The temperatures that are required to create these ejectocytes are at least the melting point of the metal, and it looks like uh, we are actually in the vapor phase, which is gaseous metal and uh, this amounts to, for the liquid metal, 1,600 degrees Kelvin, and, and for titanium, higher. For the vaporous state, is several thousand degrees higher than that. If these new sources of energy do turn out to be real, and uh, I say there's possibly several different, totally different varieties, uh, the question is, what effect will this have on our society, on the future? Well. It's just possible may, they may be no more than laboratory curiosities and can't be scaled up to commercial levels. I think that's rather unlikely. Nuclear energy was once a laboratory curiosity. So let's assume that these devices can be developed. The future is then almost unlimited. It could be the end of the fossil fuel age, the end of oil and coal, and the end, incidentally, of many of our worries about global pollution and global warming. Right now, two-thirds of the cities has problem in pollution. And one-third of the land of my country is damaged by the acid rain. 80% of the power and the source is from coal. So this is a big problem. And right now, we have 1.2 billion population and we anticipate it will be one half or more billion in the middle of next century. Right now, we consume one ton of the coal per capita. If we increase our power consumption by a factor of three, we will burn about five billion tons of coal in the middle of next century. That's why I made my mind to do this cold fusion research. It's a big risk for me, but I think it's worthwhile to do it. But what I like about cold fusion is it is different from thermal power, hydroelectric power, or nuclear fission power because it is potentially small. And the investments required are much smaller and hopefully it can be mass produced by industry and this completely changes the whole concept of 
power generation, cons distribution, consumption. Examples of how these new energy technologies will replace fossil fuels are already in commercial development. In Vancouver, a small manufacturer of hydrogen cells called Ballard Power Systems has convinced major auto companies to switch to a system which is both non-polluting and eventually will be more economical. Although it is not a cold fusion device, the fuel cell is an interim technology that has been around for 150 years, but was only recently developed due to advancements in technology and the global environmental imperative. Cold fusion cells could easily take a similar pathway into the marketplace with far more profound consequences because it is millions of times more powerful than chemical energy per gram of fuel. If we have a new energy source like this, which is capable of being made in very small units on up to large units, uh, that's going to revolutionize uh, uh, our future energy supply. And energy is still basic to man. It's basic to our standard of living. And uh, uh, also, if it's a type of energy that doesn't pollute in terms of fossil fuel, CO2, greenhouse effect, all of these things, as at least we currently envision the coal fusion energy source would do. Uh, it, it not only will give us this future energy source, but it's going to help us be good stewards of our, uh, our universe. It's history in the making, what we're living here. I mean, I, can't, I couldn't dream of a situation like that. Can you imagine living at the time of uh, Einstein and uh, Curie and Bohr and all these great people were doing, changing completely the science at the beginning of the century. And when I was going to school, to college, and all these things, it was like, it's over now. Everything is done. Just shut up and learn. And now, all of a sudden, I know that I don't have to shut up and I can do something in the field. I can bring my own contribution. There's a curious parallel back at the beginning of the century when the Wright brothers first flew in 1903. No papers covered it at all because everybody was convinced, certainly the American press, that heavier than air flight was totally impossible. All the top scientists said this is nonsense. And editors wouldn't even bother to send journalists or photographers to interview the Wrights or even to take pictures of them flying in full public view and it wasn't for about five years that eventually they realized my goodness this is real heavier than air flight is possible and I think a similar thing is going to happen with so-called cold fusion. Institute, an independent, non-profit, public benefit corporation which provides information and educational services to help bring about a clean energy revolution.